Hello, this is Celo Kotecký with a tutorial for CGTOTS. Now, in this tutorial, I will talk about how you can easily create chromatic aberrations to help sell the realism of your, of your render, and I will show you how to do that for both stylistic and realistic purposes, as well as showing you how to do it with some of the After Effects built-in options, as well as a third-party option. So, here is my render. Now, this is an animation I have created for a previous tutorial. You can find it somewhere here on CG Dots. It's called something like um, Glass Shuttering in Cinema 4D. Anyway, what I want to do is use chromatic aberrations just to help solve the realism of this effect. So, of course, you can also use chromatic aberrations for stylistic, for you know, stylization, but we'll, I'll show you both of these, of course. Now, there are two ways to do chromatic aberrations. The first one, is using just the copies of your beauty pass, just manipulating the original error without any third-party plugins. The second way is using magic bullet color looks for creating your your um, your chromatic aberrations. So I'll show you both of these, of course. We'll start with the simpler one, which is just manipulating your original original layers. Now, what I want to do in this one is creating this sort of cyan on one side and magenta on one on the other side. You know, these sort of colored fringes on high contrast edges, which you can, for example, see if you take a photo and zoom zoom in a lot, like later on your computer when, when you're seeing the photo, you, if you zoom in a lot, you can see these sort of fringes on high contrast edges. And this happens with any lens, at least a little bit, no matter how good it is, it will always happen. Just nothing's perfect. Anyway, and of course, on the worst lenses, lenses it's much more, uh, much more pronounced. Anyway, the way we do this is we want to create two copies of our beauty pass like this. And now we want to tint one to magenta and the other one to cyan. So we go, go to tint, put it right here. And of course, magenta is the opposite of green. So we put green on zero, copy the tint, put it here. And cyan is the opposite of red, so let's put red on zero, right? So that's that. Now we take both of these and put the transfer mode to lighten. Now this will this will influence the final sort of colors of your of your render. Watch this bullet how it sort of changes color with and without. You know these two layers made it a little bit colder and a little bit less saturated. So before we go on, let's just add an adjustment layer to fix that just a little bit we can we cannot fix that all the way but we can at least try so let's just add some of the saturation back in and let's go to curves and go into blue and we'll just warm it up just a little tiny bit like this so see that is already better it's not it's not exactly the same but it's definitely better than before now what we do is we, is we take both of these layers and nudge them on either side. And I'm using my arrow keys right here. I nudge this one on, on to the one side and the other one to the other side. So already you can see these sort of tiny little fringes, you know, colored fringes on high contrast edges. And we probably want to blur this a little bit. So we go to fast blur, put it right here. And we want to blur it first only in the horizontal direction because we mo moved it horizontally, right? It's horizontally either on the left or on the right. So we just blur it by maybe two pixels perhaps. Maybe four. Let's try four. Or let's go for a compromise three. Now we take this one, copy it on the other one as well. Ah, that's too much. Let's, let's just say two. Two should be enough. That definitely helps. Now, what we can also do is, okay, let's, let's, I don't like how they're in, in the center of the image and on the sides as well. I, I just want them to be on the, on the edges of the image. So let's just use a simple mask. Just go to our ellipse tool and mask off the center of the image. We, of course, want to invert the mask and feather it quite a bunch. And let's just take this mask, copy it and put it on the other layer as well. Yeah, like so. Maybe we want to make the mask a little smaller, perhaps. 
And now you can see that the center of your image is perfectly sharp and on the outside, on the edges, there's these little sort of chromatic aberrations. Now you can, of course, make this effect much more extreme by nudging them a bit more. Once, twice, yeah, that's about right. And maybe adding some radial blur. Now this, I have already showed you how to do the minimal effect and now I'm showing you how to do the more stylized or stylized look, you know, just to sort of enhance the effect. Wow, that's crazy. We want to go to, we want to, go to high quality, zoom. 10 is probably the right number. This looks quite nice actually. Maybe we want to use the same mask perhaps. So let's take this mask, put it here. That definitely looks better. Maybe let's nudge these layers even more. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That this is this is if you want like a really really stylized look like this. You know, maybe I don't know or old pirate. You know, uh, spying eye. What what is it called? It's not binoculars. My English sucks. Anyway. This is this sort of effect. Maybe if you watch the movie The Assassination of Jesse James by the Robert, by the coward Robert Ford. It's a horrible name for a movie, but it's a great movie and they use this effect quite a lot, you know, to simulate these sort of old style optics, these imperfect optics. So this is this is one way. If you want this sort of magenta and cyan fringe on one side and the magenta on one side and cyan on the other side. Now, if you have magic bullet looks, you can the, do the other version of the effect, which I actually think looks much better. So we turn everything except our original beauty pass. We add an adjustment layer and we just search for looks and put it right here. Now let's open the looks builder. And what we want to do now is, of course, Lux has this chromatic aberration filter built in, but we want to combine it a little bit with some other stuff just to sort of make it better. So what we do now is we can either go into each channel separately and create these sort of double colored, you know, double colored fringes or chromatic aberrations. But what, what I want to do is to have this sort of RGB rainbow effect um, chromatic aberration. And the way we do that is we increase each of these in increments. So let's maybe say one will be 0.5 and the second one must be twice of that and the third one three times that. So let's make the second one one and the third one one and a half. Right, and you can already see these sort of very, very subtle little chromatic aberrations. Let's maybe, let's just see how it looks on a different frame, on, on some sharper frame, maybe here. So you can see these right here. What you always want to do is add some edge softness and blur it not very much, add the, put the quality to the maximum and blur it just a very little bit, maybe around there. Okay, so that definitely helps. And this is this is just a very, very subtle effect just to help sell your realism a little bit. It just sort of adapts some of the weaknesses of a of a lens. So this is just a subtle effect you want to use very subtly just to help help your realism. Maybe it's you you don't even really notice it that much, but it's just one of these little things that helps just as the as the depth of field, right? These these shards are not all that blurred. They're just little little bit blurred because of the depth of field. But together with motion blur and maybe with some grain and chromatic aberrations and a little bit of lens flares, it just helps to add these layers of realism that help to sell your final image. Anyway, so this is this is the the realistic way to do this. Again, you can use this as well for the for the stylized looks. So let's go back into looks and let's let's just go crazy. Let's make this maybe one and a half. The third one, of course, the, the, the second one is of course double that, so three. And the third one is three times that, so four and a half, right? Like this, we of course want to increase the blur size definitely with that as well. Whoops, maybe a bit more. Yeah, that's about right. And what I also like to do is add one more effect and that's lens distortion. 
to add this sort of pincushioning effect. And the way you do that is you go into negative numbers, right? Because positive numbers create this sort of weird... It's not, it's not fisheye, I guess, but... Yeah, I guess this is actually more of a fisheye, but it's not exactly fisheye, it's pincushion effect anyway. So we need to go to the negative numbers and maybe around there, that looks fine. Let's play with the flatten thing just a little bit. Maybe, maybe a bit more. Around there looks fine. So let's just preview this, how this looks. And already you can see this is this is a very stylistic sort of effect, you know, it's it's very pronounced, it's very strong and and you just want, you want to use this only for if you're really looking for some stylization. And you can go crazy with this, of course, you can go back to chromatic aversions and pump these up to three and six and nine. So again, again, it's one time, two times, three times. You want to set these in increments. You don't have to be exactly precise, of course. It's just, you know, don't go, don't be crazy. Anyway, let's just go crazy with this one. Maybe, you know, just overdo this, make it totally too much. Play with this maybe a little bit. Let's see, and the, the edge softness as well, of course. Let's go crazy and see what this does. And I find that this is really a nice effect. It looks maybe like if you're looking through a... Through a... Uh, what's that thing that magi magicians have? You know, that sort of glass orb that they use to foretell the future. That's pretty much what I'm going for here. Maybe. It looks very nice. We can just play with the settings some more. Maybe increase the blur size a bit. Some more, not too much. You know, maybe let's try it without it. What does it? What does this look like? This is interesting, actually, as well. That's actually nice. I just want to add a little bit of that, of that, of that back. Definitely so, because I don't really like these. You know how they're sharp and everything. So let's just bl blur them. And maybe make put the blur before the lens distortion. That might help or the edge softness and contract it a little bit a little bit more so even the insides all are blurred now we can of course take it down maybe play some more with the distortion what can we do maybe we go all, all the way in and let's see what that does that is interesting definitely maybe let's Play some more with the, with those settings around there. That might be interesting. Let's see. And that actually looks very nice. And this is this is a heavily stylized look, of course. You don't want to use this to help your realism. It does look realistic, but. Mm, looking through a through a lens on a camera it doesn't look like this anyway what you also have to remember is if you are adding some color corrections you probably want to add that on the top right because if you maybe increase the contrast then of course you want to add it on the top because if you add it below the chromatic aberrations it will of course change the effect a little bit of uh, maybe you want to make this more extreme just so you can see. So it definitely always you want to just play with the order of your effects everywhere. Just even if even in the in the looks itself, you can just you know try to flipping these. Doesn't work very much. Maybe these two. That 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 that, that definitely made a difference. See how that. So you definitely always want to play with the order of your effects. It will definitely change something always. Maybe even the transparencies. You don't want to probably using the opacity for this because it sort of works kind of awkwardly. As you can see, it's not all that good. So you probably, if you want to tone, tone the chromatic aberrations, you want to do that in the looks editor. So anyway, this is actually quite nice. 
Let's just take a look at the previous one right here. Yeah, we can go crazier with this. Come on. Let's just nudge them a bit more. Maybe increase the radial blur to maybe like, let's say 20. <laughs> That's extreme. That is really extreme. You might even want to try to combine this maybe, right? That actually looks really nice. How it creates this sort of magenta little shapes, how they, you know, how they combine. Maybe turn off the radial blur, maybe that'll help. Well, actually, it's better with it. Maybe play with the expansion of the radial blur. Let's try the the adjustment and again let's play with the with the order of our effects. Oh this is very interesting. Grace this sort of a haze, but I'm not sure about that. Now oh, let's put it above there. Let, let's just see what the order does when we play around with the order. Oops, go on the top. Let's try this. Yeah there's not much difference there. But this definitely looks crazy and amazing at the same time. This is very nice. You, you probably want to... Things like these actually work pretty well if you do them... If you use them with some simple motion graphics, you know, just, just simple graphic type. Let's actually even try that. What we'll do is just... Let's just type something. Hello there. Let's just move it so we can see it. Make it white. Huh. 255, 255. Make it white. Bold. Always bold for for demonstration. Make it way bigger. Position it in the center. So what's the center? 480 perhaps. Yeah, that's the center. Make that text bigger. Come on, huge. Yes. And now what we want to do is we want to take it down here. We of course want to add some background, just a black background. So it's not just white pixels. No, we have to do this right here. No, come on. I did something horrible to my color settings and now it doesn't work like our ordinary color settings. Anyway, let's just add a back black background, pre-comp these, make two duplicates, make one, where is it, take effect, the effects of the of the sign one and put it on one of these, the magenta and on the other one, and let's see, let's just, we have to make them lighten, of course, and let's just move them around, this side and this side, and this actually looks very well. Maybe it's a bit too strong. Let's just decrease the movement here a little bit. And maybe increase the radial blur perhaps. Let's see, where's the mask? And where's the radial blur actually? Right here, the mask, let's decrease the expansion. Or no, wait. Oh yeah, this way, right. So that looks pretty well. Let's see, what else can we do? Let's actually play, let's see what, what happens when we make it bigger, you know, with that sort of pincushion effect. Oh, that's very nice. You can actually help, you know, sort of animate it in. So you can go into scale, start here. Go, I don't know, 20 frames in, make it 100%. Just add some easy ease right here. Let's see, let's just preview this quickly. And that looks very well. That looks really nice. You want to play a bit more with this sort of pincushion effect. Edit. And I know this is this isn't a 3D tutorial anymore right now. It's it's more motion graphics, but it doesn't matter. We can just just try and experiment. And definitely techniques from one are useful in the other one. So you always want to try both. So let's just see. That is very, very nice. 
Okay, so I hope that tutorial was useful. You definitely want to play with these effects. And see you next time.